Okay, calculate the horizontal displacement of joint D. So you see this frame here? I'm applying a horizontal load at point B, five kips. I'll have two reactions at A, one reaction at D. And uh, the dash represents the deflected shape. As you can see, it deflects a little bit of point D. It deflects a distance delta sub D H. Let's say that the cross section is six inches by eight inches, giving me a moment of inertia 181st feet to the fourth. Let's just say the modulus of elasticity is 4.176 times 10 to the sixth kips per square foot. That'll give me the EI, flexural rigidity, and the AE. Okay, so if I wanna find that deflection using virtual work, what are my steps? Well, step one is to find the reactions and uh, we'll call that the real system. So here I calculate the real system's reactions. You know where, where I'm getting these? Okay, so let's go back to the original drawing. Uh, by inspection, I can tell you that A sub X is five because the sum of the forces in the X direction is zero. So I can tell you right now that's five. Okay, what about A sub Y and D sub Y? You know where I'm getting these? What? So A sub Y is three and a third. D sub Y is three and a third. Okay, and then A sub Y, three and a third going down. So I'll put a negative sign in front of it. So there you have the reactions for the real system. Okay, remember, I'm interested in the horizontal deflection at D. I want delta sub D H. Point D, H for horizontal. Step two for the virtual work method. Uh, apply a point load at D. Okay, so here's a stick figure of the same frame. Apply that one kip point load. Okay, and then they use it statics to calculate the other three reactions, or to calculate the three reactions, D sub Y, A sub X, and A sub Y. Okay, so this is my real system, uh, pardon me, this is my virtual system. Real system, virtual system. Step three, designate the segments you're analyzing, A, B, B, C, C, D. A, B, B, C, C, D. Okay, step four. Come up with the moment and axial equations for the real system. Okay, so for AB, make a cut right here and analyze this portion. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, so AB, X is between zero and 12. At A, it's zero, at B, it's 12. Okay, see what I have here? Uh, calculate the sum of the moments about point O. You'll find that for the uh, real bending moment, 5x. Uh, axial load, 3 and 1 third kips. Okay, that's axial from A sub y. Uh, note that at A, the internal bending moment would be 0, but at B, at B, notice that x is 12. So if you stick 12 in here, you get 60. Okay, so where that meets BC, here's BC. Okay, so I'm making a cut in here. Analyze this between my fingers. Okay, so BC, here it is. 3.3 kips, that's from A sub Y. Uh, the 60 kip foot, that carries over from this analysis of AB. It carries over from this. 60 kip foot. Okay, equilibrium about 0.0. M minus 60 plus 3 and a third X. So right here, you've got the equation for internal bending moment. Okay, how is that? All right, now notice that if X is zero, this will be 60. Now stick in 18, because at point C, oops, at point C, X is 18. So what do you get when you put 18 in there? Okay, so I'm gonna multiply 18 by negative 3 and a third. And add 60 and I get zero don't I so the moment actually goes to zero at point C now is there an axial load in BC okay I'm claiming it's zero 
And the reason I'm saying that is because uh, the, the segment is actually going to move. Uh, see, there's nothing restraining it at D. I mean, it's true that I've got an A sub X and I've got a 5 kip load, but uh, no axial load due to the fact that D is actually going to be allowed to move. So I really don't even need to show that. So axial load zero due to the fact that this thing is going to move horizontally. Now analyze segment CD. Make a cut here. Analyze this segment. So here's CD. Okay, obviously uh, M sub P would be zero, internal bending moment zero. Axial load uh, three and a third in compression. Okay, so uh, what is everything that I'm going to need pretty soon? This was step four. Okay, I'm going to need these at some point. M sub P, F sub P for segment AB, then for BC. I'm going to need this, and I'm going to need this, and for CD, I'm going to need this, and I'm going to need this. Okay, so that's step four. Uh, step five is to go through this uh, whole song and dance again, but for the virtual system. Okay, so very quickly now, analyze the virtual system. So between A and B, make a cut here. Okay, that's what you see right here. Okay, A, B, X is between 0 and 12. Distance from A to B is uh, 12 feet. Okay, notice all the reactions I have here at A, that the two reactions. Okay, I find that M sub... M sub Q, okay, for virtual, that's X, axial load 2 ninth. Uh, note that at the top of the column, at point B, X is 12, so M sub Q would be 12. So where it meets BC, see the 12 here? So this is point B. Forgot to put it here. I'll throw it on here real fast. Point B right there. I've uh, got that 12 coming in from AB. Take a cut somewhere in here. That's what you're looking at. Okay, so I find that M sub Q. Here's my M sub Q. Axial load 1. Okay, now remember for the virtual system, we don't have the luxury of saying that this is moving to the, uh, to the right. So I've got a 1 kip here, 1 kip here. So uh, there will actually be an axial load in BC. 1. Okay, now I'm going to analyze CD. So for CD, cut it here. It's simpler if I analyze from the bottom up. Uh, so that's what I'll do, analyze CD. Okay, and now CD. Okay, analyzing from 0 to 8. Uh, at 0, I would be... If X is 0, I'd be at point D. Okay, so you know where I'm getting these? Okay, so M sub Q, negative X. Axial, negative 2 ninth. Okay, so I have the equations for bending moment and axial force in all three segments for the virtual. Now I'm going to put together a table to organize all this information. Okay, and I'll organize everything into a chart. So I've got the three segments here, A, B, B, C, and C, D. For A, B, for A, B, I've got the bending moment 5x. Axial 3 and 1 third. Okay, so this is A, B. So uh, M sub P, that's 5x. Axial, three and a third. Okay, and then for segment uh, BC. For segment BC, remember this. Okay, for bending, negative three and a third x plus 60. Okay, and the axial... Uh, that was zero. Okay, and then CD. Bending is zero. Axial negative three point three. Okay, what about the virtual? So for virtual, AB, that was bending moment virtual X. Okay, axial 2 ninth. For segment BC, 
expanding negative 2 ninth x plus 12. Axial 1. And then for CD, bending negative x, axial 2 ninth, negative 2 ninth. Okay, so that's all the data organized into a chart. And now step six is to apply the virtual work equation. I've got the flexural, that's bending moment, and I've got the axial. Okay, so for each segment, okay, Q is one kip, that was the virtual load times delta sub dh. Uh, factor out the one over EI, zero to 12, uh, MP, MQ, this times this. Uh, plus uh, the integral from 0 to 18. Okay, so I've got MQ, MP, so I'm multiplying these two. I'm using the fractional version of negative 3.3. Okay, so M, MP, uh, MQ. Okay, and then I've got... Uh, okay, so MP was 0 for CD, so that's not going to generate an integral. No integral for CD. Okay, so just two integrals for segment A, B, and for BC. Okay, plus uh, the axial... Okay, so what have I got here? Pull out the 1 over AE part. FQ, FP. So FQ, FP times the length 12. That's this first product. And then the second product. Okay, uh, it looks as though I've got an F sub P of 0 for segment BC. So this product must be referring to CD. I've got uh, FQ, FP times length 8. Okay, so I have to clean all this up now. And now evaluate the integrals, clean things up. 1 kip times delta sub dh, 1 over ei. Okay, I evaluated the integrals plus 1 over ae. Uh, evaluated the appropriate products. Okay, follow my arithmetic. Uh, now, ei was given to me earlier in the video. So was ae. Do you remember what those were? Do you remember the units? Okay, go back and look at it. Uh, this was the ei part. This is the ae part. Okay, and those, uh, those units were in terms of kips and feet. So when I solve this for delta sub dh, I get uh, 0.168 feet approximately, uh, which would be 2.01116 inches. So what does that represent again? Here's the original drawing, isn't it? This is where I started it. Okay, so when I apply that 5 kip load, uh, it'll displace joint D, delta sub dh, that's uh, 2.01116 inches. Uh, please remember this example and remember the result. Uh, I may use this result in a future video. Uh, so please remember this. So there you have it.